Thanks, Sean. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off uh, talking a little bit about um, our fungicides and a little bit about the chemistry and why it's unique and what differentiates it. And then uh, Brett will follow up with some of our uh, some of what we're seeing in the field and uh, the value that the fungicides are, are adding uh, based on what we're seeing out in the field. So I, I think um, that's how we'll do it today. And um, we got about uh, 30 minutes and then we're going to have uh, hopefully the other 30 minutes for questions. So I think really the story actually starts right here. I mean, I think it's worth pointing out that you know, over the last 60 years or so, we have the, the crop protection industry has innovated significantly. And if you look at the graph on the left, you know, this is the percent yield increase of some of the key important crops grown in North America. And we have almost or nearly or actually even over doubled some of the yields of these crops over the last uh, 40, 50, 60 years. And that's a testament to the crop protection industry and to the tools and the innovations that we bring to growers to allow them to achieve higher yields on their on their acres. And so we're, we're quite proud of that. But, but not only that, but if you look at the graph on the right, we've been able to do this with lower amounts of active ingredient per acre. And, and this is something that's probably not well publicized and a lot of folks maybe aren't aware of this, but this again speaks to the to the efficiency and potency of the new molecules that we're bringing to market in the industry. And I, I happen to believe that, you know, Syngenta uh, leads the industry in the ability to bring these new innovative molecules to market. And we'll give some good examples of that. I think Syngenta has very good brand equity. Uh, farmers and, and folks know our brands and, and we've been very good at that. But I think there's also an opportunity to put more equity in our ability to innovate within chemistry and, and bringing new modes of action to market. So Brett, at the next slide, just to give an example of that, I, I'd say there's really no better example of innovation within a class of chemistry within the fungicides than the carboxamide class of chemistry. And this of course includes the fungicides with an SDHI or succinate dehydrogenase inhibitor mode of action. And this is not a new class of chemistry by any means. The carboxamides have been in the market for, for decades, but only in the last few years have the uh, innovation within this class of chemistry occurred with the pyrazole carboxamides. And there's a, a whole wave of these that have kind of been in development over the last couple of years. One, such as the on the left side of the screen there, this is phylloxaproxad, uh, which is zemium. This is the fungicide active ingredient that is in Creaxor. This represents this kind of new wave of, of carboxamide chemistry. Again, it's got the pyrozole carboxyl group, which is highlighted there in the little blue star. And that, it really innovated within this chemistry to the fact that it's about four times more potent than the previous carboxamides like boscolid and, and flutalanil and others that had been in the market. So that was the first step, but actually Syngenta took that even further and if you look in the middle there, that's a picture of selatinol. This is the active ingredient in Trivapro. It's the carboxamide component in Trivapro. And not only does it have this pyrozole carboxyl group, which makes it a pyrozole carboxamide, the more potent within this class of chemistry, but we innovated even further with the addition of what's called a benzenorbanine ring. And this benzenorbanine ring is highlighted there in the little purple star. This is something that the Syngenta chemist did that was very novel with this molecule that essentially made it more lipophilic. It, 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 makes, it allows the molecule to bind stronger to the wax layer in the leaf and prevents it from being metabolized quickly. So what we're seeing, and many of you who have used Trivapro may be aware of the really long lasting activity that we're getting from Trivapro and it's, it's all attributed to the benefit of this, of this enhanced chemistry uh, within the selatinol molecule itself. And then we've moved even further with the development of adepidin. As Sean mentioned, I was involved in a lot of this development activity. This was an extremely exciting molecule that, that we developed. Not only is it a pyrozarchal boxel, uh, so it has the potency. Not only does it have the, um, it's got a modified uh, benzenorbidine ring there, which gives it the uh, as much stamina, so we have the long-lasting activity, but it has even a new innovation, which is this uh, ethyl linker that's in the middle there, highlighted in green. And what this done, what this has done is it's expanded the spectrum across 
many of the economically important diseases so that we're getting a uh, actually good potency and long lasting activity on a much broader spectrum of pathogens. So this kind of shows you how we've taken an innovation in the market and further innovated to make it even a, a better molecule. If you go to the next slide, I'll just a little more detail of, of uh, these two in particular. So again, salatinol so, so is the carboxamide SDHI fungicide that's contained in Trivapro. It contains the unique benzenorbidine ring we like to stay harder worker, working and longing, longer lasting. And sure enough, this is attributed to this innovation within the chemistry itself that allows a very potent molecule to persist uh, longer in the leaf and give you longer and, and longer lasting activity. And for a crop like corn or soybeans where you typically may get only one application, you know, we find this is very important. And a lot of the fungicides used metabolize and therefore are no longer active. So this this gives it a real advantage to Trivapro and gives it that, again, hard working, long lasting activity. And then the next slide, going around to look at Marivis, again, this was innovated even further. And by the way, we like to call this innovation by design. And what that means is that we, we look at opportunities that fungicides, that we'd like a fungicide to have in, in the field in terms of its performance, in terms of the of the value and the and the benefit it will give to the to the user and to the growers, and then try to to use some of our of our um, discovery tools that we have to des essentially design this chemistry. So we've moved kind of beyond this sort of high throughput screening, and we're now able through a structure activity relationship type process we can actually model, and which allows us to design and predict how these molecules will behave. Uh, in the field. And so, you know, if you wanted three things for a, for a new fungicide to have, you would want potency. And I mentioned how we've, how we've delivered that. You would want stamina, you would want it to, to last long. And of course you would want it to have a good spectrum that would cover all of the important diseases that are affecting your crop. And we really feel like we hit it out of the park with the development of Adepidin in our Maribus brands. And we like to call this power spectrum stamina, which represents the attributes of this fungicide, and again, as a, as a product of our innovation by design, which again, I believe Syngenta leads the industry. So of course, we don't just have uh, the, the active ingredients, the, 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 just the solo carboxamides. When we make a fungicide, we typically add in more than one fungicide and make a mixture, and we'll go into a little bit of why we do that in some detail in a moment, but first to look at you know, how we formulate and, and the products that we put in our fungicides. Most of the fungicides on the market for corn and soybeans consist of, uh, of either a strobilin like azoxystrobin, a triazole like propiconazole, or a carboxamide like uh, salatinol or Marivis that I just mentioned. And for, for our products, which are listed on the left there, Marivis Neo and Trivapro, we ensured that we have robust rates of all three of those in one product to give you maximum performance and maximum value. And what you can see is that most of the other brands only have maybe one or two of those components. And if they have all three components, they don't actually have a robust rate, meaning a robust rate, meaning that that active ingredient could control the pathogen with commercial acceptance on its own. So when you say we got 60% of straight goods rate, what we're meaning is, is that, yeah, you're getting maybe in some of these other products, you're getting maybe more than one fungicide, but the rates may be subpar to what actually would be used in a solo product. So, and we, and we feel that's, that's not really giving the best value out of these products. So I just to point out that, you know, in Syngenta, we make sure that our products are, are well formulated. We make sure that they have robust rates of all of the important active ingredients that are in that product, any of them could in fact stand alone and provide efficacy. And I'll get, again, I'll get back in a moment to the benefit and value of, of mixing these, these three AIs together. But first I'd like to mention a little bit about, about what, what has been talked about a lot um, in the field around plant health or, or crop enhancement, plant performance. You know, this is around the ability of a fungicide to deliver physiological benefits beyond that of just disease control. And we've seen some really good examples of this. If you go to the next slide, uh, Brett, you can see clearly that 
we've known for many years, you know, as oxystrobin was launched in the late 90s, uh, after some years of, of commercial use, we started seeing these physiological effects, such as greening, uh, delayed uh, senescence, um, drought tolerance, just visual effects that we studied further and found that there were actually some benefits uh, that we were seeing beyond disease control, which was contributing to increases in enhanced grain quality as well as yields. And so we have several examples of this over the years with the zoxystrobin. And what we have learned and what we are finding out more and more about is that actually this is also true with our carboxamide chemistry. So just to take back a step for a moment and think about how this is working, you know, I put an example graph here, um, one on the left and, and one on the right. So if you think about uh, the fact that, you know, plants use sunlight to make energy. So on the x-axis, you have sunlight. So as sunlight increases, you can make more energy. So it's, a, it's basically a, a linear relationship until it's not, until the plant suddenly has no more capacity to manage the extra light to make photosynthesis. So that's where that green on the left-hand side, that green curve starts to plateau because for a while, the more sunlight, the more energy, but then you, you maximize the capacity of the plant to utilize the energy for photosynthesis and then the rest is absorbed as sort of weight excess light. And we're able to actually picture this in the laboratory, which I'll show you in the moment. Now, if a plant is under stress, then it's not able to efficiently use as much of this, what we call photochemistry, this, this light that's used to make photosynthesis and make energy for the plant and therefore increase yields because abiotic stresses decrease this efficiency. And what we have seen is that some fungicides, particularly some of the respiration inhibitors like the strobilin and carboxamide class of chemistry are able to help mitigate this lack of efficiency. So if you go to the next slide, we can show actually a picture of this in the lab where we've used laser photography to take a picture of the actual light that's being utilized versus the light that's being wasted. So all of these plants were applied either with a fungicide or were left untreated. They were allowed to then drought for several days. So they, had, uh, they wilted and then we rewatered them to recover them. And as that wilting process for about 10 days, decreased the, the capacity for the plants to maintain light. That's one of the damaging things of drought. And you can see that reflected by the sort of red light that bounces off of the untreated. And then where, if you go further to the right, where it looks more green, that's less light being wasted and more light being utilized for photosynthesis. And so even in the absence of disease, these were greenhouse plants just showing you that even in the absence of disease, the, the preventative application of a fungicide still protected the plant's ability to, to, to photosynthesize and it's a capacity to, pho to photosynthesize light to make energy. So this is one example of this and we've also done this on corn and other crops looking at uh, using this um, hyperspectral analysis. It's uh, quite complicated but basically what we've done is we've found points of light that actually the naked eye cannot see and we've measured them on this analyzer, this hyperspectral analyzer, and found certain what they call biochemical indices within the light spectrum that were significantly highlighted over that of the untreated under drought pressure. And so we've seen and we have good scientific data to show that fungicides that contain azocystrobin and or adepidin are, are able to not only control diseases, of course, but able to protect the plant and give the plant a physiological benefit that allows it to maintain optimal light capacity to generate energy. And these are the kinds of things that we've been finding. We also know that we are able to manage uh, some drought tolerance through the ability to minimize transpiration. Of course, transpiration is the, the utilization of, of water to, to, for respiration in the plant. But typically when transpiration is decreased, photosynthesis is also decreased. And what we've seen, one of the other benefits is because of what I mentioned before with the management and light efficiency, photosynthesis stays optimal, but yet less water is needed. So it's, it's essentially showing an efficiency of, 
of, of the of photosynthesis using less water, which gives it some drought tolerance by the use of these fungicides like selatinol and like adepidin. Next slide. But we also have done trials, and this was done with our colleagues in Stein, uh, Switzerland, which is uh, near where our global headquarters is located. And we've seen that while selatinol has been able to demonstrate this conservation of water, other carboxamides that are in the industry, in this case, bixofen, which is the carboxamide contained in Lucinto, do not. So we have found that while these plant benefit, plant performance, plant physiological benefits can be found in some of these chemistries, it's not necessarily universal across the board. Next slide. And we can see this, in fact, in the field. And this is really where I think the fun begins kind of for us. So this was a field trial that uh, Eric, my colleague Eric Tedford went out and visited. And we were disappointed, actually, when we first got there to find that there really wasn't much disease pressure in this particular trial. But when we went around and looked at the plots, we did notice that there was something different about the plots applied with Maribus Neo. And what you're seeing there is that the is essentially a delayed senescence effect described primarily by, by the, the data that I was showing you earlier that allows an efficiency of, of transpiration and efficiency of photosynthesis that allows then the plant to essentially uh, have more green leaf area for longer, which is a, obviously going to give the plant a little bit better yield and, and more um, more efficiency in the field to produce and maximize the grain fill for corn plants. So this is normal senescence that you would see. It wasn't disease related, but yet we're showing a green, a greening effect. And of course, when we take our drone footage and we look at fields, we can always see where we've, here we've applied Maravis Neo, and then we skipped some rows, and then we applied Maravis Neo. And you can actually even see this effect at a certain point prior to harvest, whether it's on, our, on a drone footage or on our NDVI uh, aerial footage as shown there on the right-hand side. So you can clearly see that, that the greening effect is, is benefiting the plant. And then when we took the yield of these different strips, we found you know, close to a 12, 13 bushel per acre increase in yield where Maravis Neal was applied under maybe low or, or even maybe moderate to low disease pressure still getting that yield increase just from this enhanced greening. So this of course is, you know, we talk about this improved plant health, but it really does make a difference on grower yields. And then this example here with soybeans showing Maravis Neo, clearly greener. We've got Preaxor on the right-hand side there, which is also a good fungicide. Both are providing significant activity over the untreated check. But when you look at the yield differences, you know, you're still getting a eight to nine bushel increase uh, over the um, uh, over the preaxor because of this uh, extra benefit around not only potency and long lasting activity, but also this uh, plant physiological effects and benefits that we see with these fungicides. So really maximizing the value. And of course, I think it's also worth pointing out, it's not always about yields. I mean, uh, harvest efficiency because of the quality of the stock you know, has also been a benefit that we've had guys come and tell us and growers have been able to save money just by able to harvest faster and more efficient and with less, with, uh, using less dollars to do that. So there's sometimes you get yield increases and, and that can show a good benefit and a good return on investment. But we also have to remember that, you know, these improved plant health uh, characteristics also um, increase harvest efficiency in many cases, and we can find value uh, in that as well. That helps to um, to help to achieve a return on investment. So I wanted to mention I, I mentioned earlier about the different chemistries that we typically have uh, within our products, and I mentioned three specific chemistries. That is the um, the triazole fungicides, so for an example. Uh, propiconazole, these are DMI mode of action. The strobilin fungicides, such as azoxystrobin, which is a QOI mode of action. And then the carboxamide fungicides, these are these more recent uh, dish fungicides, as I mentioned, trivapro and, and adepidin, um, the uh, selatinol and adepidin and the, and the trivapro and maravis brands, respectively. And, and we have our, 
products have all three of those in there. And the reason for that is they have different attributes. So if you think of a, of a continuum of preventative versus curative or mobility versus persistence, these are key attributes that can be different between the different fungicides and why, they're, why it's important to, to, to mix, to sometimes get better activity when these are mixed. So where there's a colored, more, more highlighted color versus a gray area is where the characteristic of that particular class of chemistry provides. So for example, triazoles typically are more curative and that has a benefit. However, because they are very mobile in the plant, they tend to be metabolized quicker, so they aren't typically very persistent. Now, there are some exceptions to this, but as a general rule, triazoles are curative, but they're highly mobile and therefore not persistent. The strobilin fungicides, as well as the carboxamide fungicides, which are both respiration inhibitors, they're both very good preventative. I think the carboxamides, as you can see the color change, also have some, uh, some useful curative activity compared to the strobilins, but they both have more persistence than the triazoles, especially the carboxamide fungicides and especially the Syngenta carboxamides, the Syngenta uh, carboxamide fungicides, because as I mentioned, we have that stamina part of the component, which allows it even be longer lasting than what would typically already be seen with that, with that chemistry. And so when we think about the stages of infection of, of a pathogen, whether it's preventative, it hasn't, the spores landing, it's gonna penetrate the plant, or whether it's already penetrated the leaf and starting to grow inside, or it's colonized inside the leaf, and now it's sporulating. And of course, you need different chemistries to manage these different stages, particularly in a crop like corn or soybean, where you're gonna get only one application, uh, maybe two at the most, but you, you, know, you may have different stages. We, we always say we like to get the applications as preventative as possible, but if you do have some infection in there, the triazole, of course, is gonna help you to, to manage that as well. And then the, um, the more preventative, uh, strobilin and carboxamide, particularly the carboxamides that have some curative activity as well as a longer lasting persistence, is going to help protect that new tissue and maximize the yield potential. So this is why we have those three different products within each of our fungicides. And as I mentioned earlier, we have robust rates of each, th of each three, and we actually have also the, uh, the most active of the active ingredients within the class of chemistry for each of those products that's in the market. So really, really good premium products that we offer with Syngenta, and this is the reason why we do that. I think on the next slide, um, Brett, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand it over to you. We're now gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the benefits that we're seeing with the performance of these products in the field, and then we'll come back at the end with any questions you might have to, to me or to Brett, talk a little bit more about the, the chemistry or some of the other attributes that we've discussed. Brett? Thanks, Tyler, good stuff there. So we've seen really the science behind our products and, and plant health benefits and why they're performing, how they do. So I'll spend the next few minutes talking about some of the benefits that we see. But first I wanted to talk about early application. In particular, this is, this is around corn. I think a lot of parts of the country we're getting to that stage or we will be soon and you need to think about you know, when you make your fungicide application and, and what the benefits might be. So this is really what we consider a yield, yield potential curve. And as you'll see, early applications, which we've labeled here as V4 to V8, you will see yield bumps. And if you use these fungicides, you will get positive return on investment. But we see our maximum yields in that VTR1 or those tassel timing applications. That's where we see yield potential maximized. If you wait till after that, I think in the past, maybe some companies have talked about uh, app applying at brown silk. That's really waiting too long in our eyes, especially with the new longer residual control, the persistence of these SDHIs and Trivapro and Miravis Neo. We really recommend uh, either going at V4 to V8 or those VTR1 applications, or uh, if you can, uh, two applications. The important thing to think about here is that, um, think about your own operation. If you have equipment, if you, if you feel that the benefit is there for you to go early with the herbicide uh, to maximize your equipment, uh, you will still see a return on investment. And again, it really has to do with, with the economics of your operation uh, when you decide your spray timing. Let's take a look here at one example across um, 
eight trials that we had with with Miravis Neo on corn. And what we saw across these eight trials was an 11 bushel advantage um, at that early application timing of V6 in this case. So really we knew at 320 corn, we would need five bushels to break even. And as you'll see with 11 bushels over the untreated, uh, this equates to a return on investment at V6 across eight trials of over $17 an acre. So really still strong ROI potential with your early applications of corn, if that's something that you're thinking about. And now we'll take a broader look at some of the benefits and the key attributes of these products and, and then some data and some pictures from the field as to what we've seen. So Tyler did a good job of laying out uh, Salatinol and the Depotin and some of the innovations we've made here. So again, remember, Salatinol is the SDHI that powers Trivapro and the Depotin that, that SDHI chemistry powering our Miravis brands. In corn, they're very, very similar. They, they're both extremely high performing products with, with great potential for, for maximum yield. Tribapro is still the best product if you're going to see rust more than three or three out of five years. We, we recommend Tribapro being, being the strongest product in those, those market environments. Adepidin is a close second for rust, but we've known, uh, we found that, that Salatinol is the best rust product probably in the world for corn. Uh, so if that is your main driver disease, uh, Tribapro might be the product to, to stick with here. If the gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blights, or or plant health benefits are really driving your fungicide decision on corn, we feel that Miravis Neo is an excellent option for you. In soybeans, the decision is much more clear as to how we segmented. Salatinol is, is a very good soybean product, but with Adepidin, we've seen major step changes in control of some of the hardest to get diseases and really detrimental diseases, especially when we think about uh, the Midwest soybean grower, whether it's frog eye leaf spot, septoria brown spot, and even the strobilorin resistant frog eye and brown spot, adepidin we know has great control over those diseases. Target spot is another product or another disease that adepidin does very well on. In addition to the white mold um, benefits that we've seen through adepidin, white mold is an extremely tough, tough to get disease, uh, but adepidin does a really good job if you time it correctly and you protect your flowers of doing a really good job of protecting your yields uh, in white mold environments. And again, you're going to get really, really strong plant health benefits with Adepidin. So uh, Miravis Neo, if you're looking for one product for corn and soybeans, is an excellent solution. Um, if you're in a rust environment, you might want to think about Trivapro for corn and then Miravis Neo for your soybeans. So let's look at Miravis Neo and, and bring out some of those talking points and benefits that, that Tyler did a good job of laying out. So really it's that innovation by design. You're gonna get power, spectrum, and stamina, a very potent fungicide that's gonna get a wide variety of diseases and last a long time. So you don't really have to worry about what your driver disease is. Um, if you know you're using Miravis Neo, you know you're gonna be protected. It's those three active ingredients, all with different modes of action to protect your plant. And Trivapro and Miravis Neo are the only two fungicides on the marketplace with two active ingredients providing plant health. Again, Tyler talked about strobilurin chemistries, and now with our SDHIs, we have two active ingredients for plant health. We're gonna get the curative and preventative activity to protect those plants uh, throughout the season. They rapidly move into the wax layer, and that's what creates that long lasting control that we talked about with Miravis Neo. And again, you're gonna get control of all of the yield limiting diseases in the marketplace, including tar spot, a newer disease that we're seeing across the Midwest uh, that started to make its way into Iowa, a very detrimental disease. Uh, we think Miravis Neo is the best product on the market to protect you from tar spot. So again, what does this mean in the field and what have we seen? This is a different picture than Tyler showed, but very similar. It's obvious we where the Miravis Neo has been sprayed, that greener, longer effect, that increased pho and prolonged photosynthesis to help maximize yield. And in this case, as we saw 17 bushels an acre over the untreated check. Across soybeans, we see the same thing. Uh, this actually has a few competitors, the untreated and Miravis Neo. And as you'll see, this led to over 11 bushel increase over the untreated and uh, substantial in yield increases over those other competitors. And that has to do with that long persistent control of the SDHIs that we've added uh, to our portfolio with the addition of Miravis Neo. Really, really strong results. 
So let's look at the benefits in terms of return on investment. So this is across West Heartland, uh, the geography that, that all of you are in, in, in Syngenta. And so we've seen across these trials, 20.5 bushel increase over the untreated check at our VTR1 application timing. So when we look at a corn price of $3.20, you would need 9.3 bushels to pay for this fungicide application. And with the 20.5 bushels that we're seeing, this equates to $35.84 um, in return on investment per acre. So if you have a couple thousand acre operation or even a smaller operation, this leads to real dollars, real return on your investment. And that's why we're recommending these fungicides. When we take a look at soybeans with Miravis Neo, at 830 beans, we knew you needed 3.6 bushels to break even or more. Our average across all of these 37 trials, we call this a piano chart, each of these lines is actually uh, the yields from these individual trials. We have seen that 84% of these growers broke even with their yields at 6.8 bushel average. So when we take that to ROI, uh, with Miravis Neo, we're seeing a $26.56 increased return on investment over untreated checks across soybeans. And again, 84% of the time, these were profitable trials. Now let's switch gears to Chivapro quickly. Um, again, this contains that SDHI um, selatinol for that very strong, potent protection. Like Neo, three active ingredients, all with different modes of action for better resistance management and to protect the plant. The preventative and curative disease activity uh, to help protect that from disease all season long. You're going to get strong disease control against tar spot, gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, and again, the best rust product in the market. Tribopro was, in fact, rated excellent for gray leaf spot in 2020 corn efficacy third party trials this year. And in addition to disease control, again, Tribopro and Miravis Neo, the only two fungicides in the market with two active ingredients for plant health benefits, which we have shown leads to that prolonged photosynthetic activity better water use efficiency, and that leads to maximized yield potential. Here we're showing Tribopro. Uh, really, we're seeing that strong, uh, prolonged photosynthetic activity with the greener, longer plants. And in this case, uh, this grower was able to see 20 bushels over the untreated check. Really, really strong performance here. And let's look at a piano chart. This one, in fact, has 156 trials or 156 keys in this piano chart. And what we've seen with Tribopro, again, when we look at $3.20 corn, our, our 9.3 bushel break even, we've seen 17.6 bushels across 156 trials, leading to a very, very strong ROI here of over $26.56 an acre. So again, that increased consistency, uh, the strong potency leading to this return on investment uh, to help growers uh, be more successful. So as we wrap up here to summarize in this last slide, if you want to think about the innovation by design that we brought to our new fungicides, what is the biggest take-home messages from what you've seen? And that really revolves around the message of getting robust rates of our active ingredients with multiple modes of action and preventative and curative activity to help protect these plants all season long. Proven plant health benefits, as Tyler laid out, the science behind what we're seeing, and that's the prolonged photosynthesis and water use efficiency for better grain and plod fill, maximizing your yield, in addition to the harvest efficiencies of reduced lodging. And we actually did a study in 2016 where we saw that those harvest efficiencies led to an increased return on investment of $16 an acre. That's the, you know, you were able to harvest 1.7 miles an hour faster, uh, use less diesel. All of those things uh, help lead to those ROI beyond yield uh, that we talked about. And again, strong return on investment, consistent performance, and long residual control to help maximize the value in the field. So again, if there's three things that you take away from those message uh, today, that's what we'd like you to, to think about moving forward. So Sean, that's really how we'll wrap up today. I think we've left plenty of time for any questions or clarifications or comments.